Operations by Captain uh, Michael Parrish. Commissioners, you received all of the support materials in your packet on Tuesday, as well as the base package. Our interim board secretary, Ms. White, will provide us with various updates and incoming weekly correspondence. Under new business, we will take up the applicant appeal of Ms. Cecil Costin and the department's recommendation for a board hearing date on the matter of VNF Collision, um, Inc. Attorney Wyrick will report out on these items at the appropriate time. And lastly, lastly, I would like to announce the following reminders. The upcoming board elections, uh, Commissioner's Article 4 of the board, BOPC bylaws governs the officers of the board, including the nomination process for election and duties of the officers. Section 2, entitled Election of Officers and Terms, states in relevant part, the members may elect officers annually from its membership by majority vote. The term of office is for one year or until the successor has been elected. Further, new offices may be created and filled at any time at any meeting of the board, except as otherwise provided. Each officer will hold until um, will hold office until such officer's successor is duly elected. Please note the following information for the nominations process under Section 3 of the board's bylaws. Uh, section A, any board member who is eligible to serve may self-nominate or be nominated by a fellow member. A member need not be present to be nominated, provided they have previously indicated their willingness to serve. It is the responsibility of the candidate to inform the board members of his or her intention to run for office. Once the chair opens the nomination process, nominations may, be may also be taken from the floor. Nominations do not need a second. Members who are nominated from the floor may decline or accept the nomination, but must do so on record. The chair will need a motion and a second the nomination. Voting section four voting states that a quorum is required for voting. Only members present are eligible to vote, and any member may vote for him or her. Please see section six B duties of officers for more details on office requirements. We will have board elections on third Thursday, June 11, 2020, and uh, the second Thursday in June. Please plan to attend and cast your votes. Um, uh, public comments, again, if you would like to uh, make a public comment, please complete the smart sheet form referenced on the board's agenda. Or you may raise your hand by clicking on the participants in the attendee controls at the bottom of your computer screen. You will then see raise hand at the bottom of the participants. Or you may dial star nine if you are participating by mobile device. You may utilize any of these options by 4 p.m. To, to be acknowledged for public comment. Also, please note videos or images deemed inappropriate by the chair will result, will result in your dismissal of the meeting, from the meeting. During the public comment section of the agenda, each speaker will have the two minutes allotted to speak. Mr. Brown will acknowledge each speaker. We ask that you remain respectful and professional. Please note the board continues to accept citizens' feedback by telephone, email, fax, and mailing, and will respond accordingly. The telephone numbers to the board's office is 313-596-1830. Again, that's 313-596-1830. And the Office of the Chief Investigator's number is 313-596-2499. Three one three five nine six two four nine nine. Should you like, uh, should you like to file a citizen's complaint re regarding alleged police misconduct? At this time, please place your cell phones or electronic devices on silent and other background sounds um, to prevent interrupting the meeting. And finally, in the spirit of effective communication, please treat each other respectfully and professionally. Commissioners, you're reminded to not to speak until you're recognized by the chair and address your comments to the issues that are relevant to the agenda. 
My objective is to run an orderly meeting and conclude in a reasonable time. And we do have a full agenda today. Thank you. At this time, commissioners, um, we have the recommended recommendations for promotions. Madam Chair. Commissioner Bell. I move to approve Chief of Police James E. Craig recommendation to the rank of Lieutenant the following individual, Sergeant William DeSicchio and Sergeant David A. Patterson. Second. It's been moved and supported that we... Vice Chair Annie Hope, second. Yes. It's been moved and supported that we promote to the rank of Lieutenant Sergeant Dodecchio and Sergeant and Sergeant David Patterson. Is there any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Roll call sorry, vote. We're doing a roll call vote. I'm sorry. Let's okay. do the roll call vote. Madam Vice Chair, Person Holt. Yes. Commissioner Bell. Yay. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Birch. Yes. Commissioner Burton. Commissioner Davis. No. Commissioner Griffey. Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Holly? Yes. Madam Chairperson, the motion passed. Thank you. At this time, we have the promotions regarding... Um, Madam Chair. Commissioner Bell? I move to... I'm oh, sorry, one second. That the following individual, uh, I'm sorry, one second, please. <laughs> to approve Chief of Police James E. Craig recommendation to vote following to the rank of sergeant. Second. Um, Vice Chair Hope, second. You didn't name the names yet. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh. <laughs> Madam Chair, I think we need to turn our volume down a little. I think that's why we're good. Somebody turn your volume down. Thank you. Madam Chair, Madam Chair I'm, I'm ready at this time. Please, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Detective Joseph L. Felix, Detective Robert T. Sender, that's S-K-E-N-D-R, Detective Shannon A. Wright, Detective Renette Candy, Police Officer Cornelius J. O'Leary, Police Officer Janelle Nettles, I'm sorry, Janelle E. Nettles, Police Officer Jamie L. Lenoski, Police Officer Jordan K. Grace, Police Officer Kevin A. Briggs, Police Officer Timothy Vernon, Police Officer James J. Winicki, that's W I E N C E K, if I have a Police Officer Nate B. Miller, Police Officer Glenn E. Anderson, Police Officer Kyle F. Johnson, Police Officer Christopher S. Rayburn, that's R A B I O R, and Police Officer Cedric A. Dunbar and Police Officer Sean Twice M. Tatum, and Police Officer Lawrence E. Russell, and Police Officer Patrick R. Taylor, and Police Officer Brent M. Sure, S-U-H-E-R. Ms. White, is that all the names? I can, I can repeat them. Um, okay, so Detective Joshua L. Felix, Detective Shannon A. Wright, Detective Robert T. Skinder, Detective Renette Canty, Police Officer Cornelius J. O'Leary, Police Officer Glenn E. Anderson, 
Police Officer Janelle E. Nettles, Police Officer Kyle F. Johnson, Police Officer Jamie L. Lewandowski, Police Officer Christopher S. Rabior, Police Officer Jordan K. Grace, Police Officer Cedric A. Dunbar, Police Officer Kevin A. Briggs, Police Officer Sean Treese M. Tatum, Police Officer Timothy D. Vernon, Police Officer Lauren E. Russell, Police Officer James J. Winsick, Police Officer Patrick R. Taylor, Police Officer Nathan B. Miller, and Police Officer Brent M. Sir to the ranks of Sergeant. To the ranks of Sergeant. Is there a second? Second. Second. It's been moved and supported that we promote the officers and detectives and officers to the rank of sergeant. Is there any discussion? The named officers. Is there any discussion? No discussion. Those in favor? Aye. I'm sorry, roll call. I'm sorry, roll call vote. I'm sorry. Holt. Yes. Commissioner Bell? Yay. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Birch? Yes. Commissioner Burton? Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Griffin? Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Holly? Yes. Madam Chairperson, the vote passed. Thank you. Madam Chair, I didn't I didn't hear my name called and my mic is constantly being muted. And my mic is constantly being muted. Mr. Burton, she called your name, but what is your vote? I I vote yes, but my mic is constantly being muted. Thank you. Thank you. Please not let it again. The motion passes. Madam Chair. Commissioner Bell. I move to I move to approve Chief of Police James E. Craig recommendation to promotion of the rank of the Ms. White to read the names off, please. Okay. Officer Gregory R. Tourville to the rank of detective. Police Officer Eric J. Peterson. Police Officer R. Flesh. Police Officer Lanita M. Lanita P. Malone, Police Officer Vanessa L. Burt, Police Officer Melanie L. Weathers, Police Officer Derek M. Mason, Police Officer Police Officer Police Officer Tyron R. Hogan, Police Officer Eric D. Carthen, Police Officer Gilda C. Creighton, Police Officer Derek C. Ott, Police Officer Christina Dunbar, Police Officer Michael C. Clean, Police Officer Danielle D. Hutchford, Police Officer Michael Lee. Yes. Okay, I was just, because we can't, I can't hear the names because of the feedback. So can okay. you go ahead and continue? Okay, I'll go back to Police Officer Danielle D. Crutchfield, Police Officer Michael G. Fleas, Police Officer Michael L. Johnson, Police Officer Antonio D. Allen, Police Officer Eric B. Pingelli, Police Officer Johnny A. Fox, and Police Officer Brad T. Comer to the rank of detective. To support. Support. It's been moved and supported that we promote the named officer to the rank of detective. Is there any discussion? Those in favor? I'm sorry, roll call vote. Madam Vice Chair Holt. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. I can come back. Commissioner Bell. Yay. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Birch? Agreed. 
Commissioner Burton? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Brady? Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Holly? Yes. Madam Vice Chair Holt? Yes. President Carter, the motion passed. Thank you. And thank you, commissioners, and congratulations to all the lieutenants, all the sergeants, and all the detectives that were promoted. And we look Madam, forward Madam to Chair, your leadership. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll wait till you finish your remark. I'm sorry. No, I, I was just going to say we look forward to their leadership as they take on their roles, their different assignments uh, within our community. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bell. Yes, Madam Chair, I just wanted to say it was honor and privilege to uh, make this motion on behalf of these officers uh, to the rank of lieutenant and sergeant detective. As you all know, I'm a retired lieutenant with the Detroit Police Department. I held the rank of sergeant and lieutenant. I know these officers work extremely hard uh, to get on this motion list to be promoted this time. I know I'm proud of them. I'm proud of the family and I'm proud of the department. And I'm just proud of this commissioner to uh, render them in these ranks because they have earned uh, the rank. Uh, so we just wish them the best that you stayed in. You held the rank of lieutenant and sergeant with Wayne County Sheriff. You know exactly yes. what I'm speaking of. So I appreciate your service and your commitment to law enforcement. Thank you. Any other commissioners uh, have comments they want to make? Yeah, Madam Chair, I just want to congratulate the officers and everyone on their promotions. And also just want to say that Given the information that we have, this board in no way meant to cast any dim light on any of the candidates that were up for promotion. Uh, we just had a lot of uh, information put before us, and there were some discrepancies. And once we had those dates and we talked about the situations on some of the things, uh, we, we came to the decision we came to today. But in no way were we trying to cast any dim light on any of the hard work that any of these officers have done throughout their careers. And we just hate that uh, it may have been perceived that way, but it is the due diligence of this board to make sure that we are in compliance with the things that we have to comply with and do the right thing for the department and the citizens of the city of Detroit. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Um, at this time, if there's nothing further, we will go move on to the chief's report. I think that's next. All right. Good afternoon again, Honorable Board Chairperson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, I would like to echo uh, what was already said. Uh, thank you, first of all, uh, for the promotions. Uh, we are very proud of the men and women that have worked very hard for this opportunity. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. Sergeants and lieutenants are, are heavily relied on, and uh, we're very, very proud of our detectives as well. So we look forward to uh, elevating them and getting their training opportunities started very quickly. Um, I want to also uh, acknowledge that Lieutenant Mark Young uh, from the Lieutenants and Sergeants Association is in fact on the call uh, and want to thank him for his partnership and leadership as well. Uh, also, uh, Director Chris Grabling uh, from Professional Standards has joined us as well. Um, I will start with the crime stats uh, through May 28th. Uh, we have experienced a uh, slight uptick in homicides, 19%. Sexual assaults are down 27%, robberies down 1%, carjacking down 4%, aggravated assaults are up 6%, non-fatal shootings are up 29%, and the overall violent offenses are up 2%. Uh, at the board's request, uh, a very quick update on our injured officers. Uh, Officer Waldis Johnson continues to recover at a, a rehabilitation facility. Officer Thurston uh, from motorcycle accident uh, is also at home recovering. Uh, Officer Felipe uh, Bottom DC uh, from the 12th precinct, the board will remember uh, he was uh, shot uh, back over the winter. Uh, he is at home recovering. Uh, Officer Mark Robbins on an on-duty vehicle accident. He's uh, he's from traffic enforcement. He's also at home recovering. And Detective Kimry Beckham is also at home uh, recovering. Uh, I do want to spend a moment before I get into the uh, COVID update uh, for the department and talk a little bit about uh, the tragic events uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, Chief of Police uh, today did at least two interviews, I know for sure, 
uh, one local, one national, uh, and, and denouncing uh, the actions of that particular officer. And uh, it's a very tragic event, uh, and we are all uh, moved by uh, the tragic events that occurred in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, within 48 hours of the incident, a teletype was issued in our department just reinforcing our use of force practices, uh, specifically as it relates to interact, citizen interaction, de-escalation, uh, and we also took the opportunity to reemphasize uh, our policy as it relates to chokeholds and neck restraints, which are strictly prohibited uh, unless uh, there is a fatal, uh, fatal force uh, option available to the officer, but otherwise they're strictly prohibited. Uh, moving to the COVID-19 update, uh, currently, we have 32 members quarantined. 22 of those members are sworn members, police officers. Uh, 10 are civilian. Uh, currently, uh, we have 15 members that are positive uh, for COVID-19. Uh, our year-to-date numbers, um, which, I mean, the past couple months, uh, 1,176 members have been quarantined or isolated. 1,142 members returned to full duty. Uh, and our uh, year-to-date, again, uh, from March to now, uh, when this uh, virus hit, 323 members overall in the department tested positive. The department continues to do a spectacular job uh, utilizing their PPE, that's their masks and their gloves, uh, practicing social distancing. Uh, we have gone throughout the department and implemented a social distance standard uh, so that the officers can safely interact with the community as well as each other. We continue uh, to go through the department and put in more uh, long-term uh, solutions to that problem, such as uh, markings that we're ordering. We're putting in the plexiglass dividers uh, and things such as that. But the officers are doing a spectacular job uh, with that, and we know that that's, uh, there's a direct correlation with social distancing and using PPE uh, and the downturn in numbers that we're seeing uh, as it relates to uh, the virus. We've tested 99% of all department members, so we have a test on file. Uh, we mandate the test for the officers. Uh, initially, some officers were a little bit reluctant and concerned, but overwhelmingly uh, that has been received positively, and we've heard from a number of them who were asymptomatic, showing no symptoms uh, prior to being tested, and as a result of being tested, uh, have responded, that they're very thankful that the department uh, has required that test. Uh, and again, we have about 99%, just about the entire department now, uh, that have been tested. Uh, and we continue uh, to, to work towards getting 100%. I'm going to close on the report uh, with uh, the, the enforcement of, of the governor's uh, ordinance. Uh, we've issued since uh, last Friday uh, 641 warnings, and that's 641 warnings uh, and 47 uh, citation since last Friday. Uh, and then I think the board had a question uh, regarding uh, a matter on the riverfront. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, that has to do with the youth, uh, honorable chairperson. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, so uh, yesterday, uh, a, a social media influencer, I'm not 100% familiar with what exactly that is these days, but someone who has an impact uh, on a large number of people via social media uh, posted uh, through Instagram that if you had any beef with anyone at your high school or uh, and didn't get a chance to settle that beef before school got out due to school closing early uh, with the COVID crisis, that you should converge on downtown in an area of his uh, choice uh, and resolve that matter. Uh, a number of kids took him up on that offer and a number of kids decided to come down and view uh, the, 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 um, the problems that they were trying to resolve. Uh, that resulted in approximately 500 youth uh, converging on downtown. Uh, uh, a number of them had fights. A number of them had arguments. Just a lot of people jostling around. Uh, our enforcement activity from that event was 40 of them were detained and issued tickets and released at the scene without incident. I, I thought the officers uh, practiced excellent restraint and professionalism, uh, resulting in no injuries, no arrests, uh, and, and, and really no problems other than the ones uh, that we encountered when we got there, and, they were, and some of them were fighting. 
Um, the matter resolved itself without incident. And uh, the person who started uh, the campaign is uh, under investigation now. And I know that our crime intel unit and investigators are working. Any questions? Commissioners, thank you, um, Assistant Chief White. I, I, I personal believe, personally believe that it's going to be an issue with the youth going through the summer um, with the stay-at-home uh, order. Um, I think that they're, they're going to be restless and they will be out there. So I think that we have to think about that as we proceed, um, that they will be, I know that uh, a lot of them do Grow Detroit Young Talent, and this year Grow Detroit Young Talent is virtual. So that means that they will not be, they will not have to be at a particular um, uh, workplace in order to receive their uh, their pay for this summer. So I think that in particular, the youth um, will have a lot of time on their hands this summer and we have to think about um, how we're gonna deal with the youth as the summer progresses. Yes, ma'am. Um, commissioners, any other questions? Madam Chair. Commissioner, Madam Chair. Commissioner Birch. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, to A.C. White, uh, thank you so much for your service, but I agree with the chair about the restlessness of the youth as the governor decreases the time the social distancing. They already, uh, A.C. White, do not obey it, okay? So within the neighborhood, they take the streets, for instance, like Dequinda, and they race down the street with the cars, the motorbikes. So I feel for the police officers because their hands are really tied. And then, sir, when you tell children or even the criminals that the police won't chase them, that opens up the doors for them to say, okay, you can't follow me anyway. So that's like an open door to go do what you want. And the last thing I want to say is that the police from Warren, Oak Park, Ferndale chase the criminal from their city into Detroit and they capture them. You see what I'm saying? So what are you what are your plans, sir, to make it more comfortable and safe for the citizens and the officers during this summer that's coming? Please share. Yes, ma'am, through the chair. Um, well, that's always the case, that we want to make sure that we have a, a comfortable environment and a safe environment for our community. Uh, this, this is a unique challenge this year. No one saw the, the COVID-19 crisis coming, uh, and we continue to be thoughtful uh, as we enforce the ordinance, um, as, as you know, evident by our numbers, 641 warnings, 47 uh, 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 tickets issued. Uh, we recognize that this is an unprecedented time and kids are going to be kids from the standpoint of it's hot outside and they want something to do. So, uh, you know, our officers are engaging them. Our officers are, are speaking with uh, certainly the, the, the ones that are, are of age and can become police officers and giving them that opportunity as well uh, and talking to them about decisions and consequences and, and really working with the community. I think our MPOs, uh, a DC medicine shop, uh, and, and certainly under the direction of Chief Craig, I think they, they all do a very, very good job. But this is a, a, a unique circumstance. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to be patient and we're going to have to really dig deep in our, our leadership toolbox uh, from the standpoint of working with the young people this year. Uh, and, and I think they, they will do that. And I think we will continue to do that. Looking at the volume of children yesterday, I was so happy to see that no one was hurt, uh, and, and frankly, no one got arrested. You know, when you've got 500 kids, and the numbers I heard were 2,000, uh, I'll, I'll put it at 500, um, but I'll give you another 100 uh, because there were a lot of kids. Uh, so anywhere between five and 600, and, and the fact that we were able to do that in these times with our officers, I think that speaks volumes on our relationship with the community, and, and it's important that we bolster that relationship and keep that relationship healthy. So we have no desire to run around and lock up a bunch of kids. Right. Um, or that serves no purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we will do is be reasonable, thoughtful, give them some opportunities and some flexibility 
if there's eight kids standing around at the park, I'm not going to run up and, and write them a ticket. You know, um, we may say, hey, you know, guys, why don't you break into two groups of five? If they've got PPE on, we won't say anything to them. Uh, I get a little bit nervous, um, you know, when they start playing basketball and you got 20 kids playing basketball, you know, we may want to recommend something else for them to do. You don't want them breathing and sweating on each other until we get more clear um, understanding of exactly what this virus can do. But we're working with the community. We're going to continue to do that, ma'am. I hope I, I, I answered your question a little bit. Anyway. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, just one more thing, if you don't mind. Uh, AC White, I understand everything you said. I'm just saying that when something does happen like it did downtown, are you ready to have, like, the state police, are they, like, on hand? That if you need help, because again, I'm thinking about the officers. If their hands are tied and they don't know what to do with these kids that are racing on the bike at one o'clock at night, waking up everybody, what happened? Wasn't it one time ago that children that were disobedient and were doing things out of sorts, the police took them into the precinct. I'm not talking about 500, but the parent had to come get them. But wasn't that one time happening in Detroit? You remember? Through and the why chair, can't yes, we do that again? Yeah. Through the chair, um, well, you know, each individual circumstance is going to have to be evaluated uh, really under the present set of circumstances that we find ourselves in. And, and during that particular time, and I, I'm very familiar with that, um, you know, you, you had a, a, a different set of circumstances. Uh, I, you know, with regards to the state police, I think DPD yesterday showed um, that, you know, they've got, we've got everything under control for the most part. Um, we didn't lose containment. We didn't lose uh, that circumstance last night. And as I indicated, I'm very proud of the men and women that went out there and handled it. Uh, if we needed additional reinforcements, most certainly we welcome uh, the state police and we, we certainly appreciate that relationship. But that wasn't necessary yesterday. Uh, and we don't anticipate it being necessary uh, as we go forward. It's the key is communication, uh, enforcement, uh, and being reasonable under the, the set of circumstances that we have. But I want to I want the board uh, to rest assured that uh, we don't see this as a, a a circumstance that we cannot handle as a police department. We have full confidence and control, uh, and 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 clear uh, and direct leadership from the chief. Uh, so we we're OK, but I, I, I do certainly uh, understand what the board has, has indicated and we will keep you informed. But um, there, at this point, there's no need to call in the state police uh, as evident by uh, how the situation was handled last evening. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, Madam Chair, just one question for the AC. Hey, and Congratulations on, on handling that situation. Uh, it was it, I was monitoring the radio and it, it went over pretty well. I do think you guys, uh, the, the department, the men and women, did a fine job with containing and, and you know with no injuries or anything like that. Um, I just have a question concerning. Okay, now that we have everyone tested, what's our plan for retesting? Uh, and is there any plan to to keep it going down the line until we're totally rid of this issue? Through the chair, uh, fantastic question that keeps us up at night. Uh, we've been talking about that as a team. Um, what's the next steps? Uh, we're, we're being uh, guided by uh, the CDC, the City of Detroit Health Department. We've, we've certainly arrived at a couple of places. One is when a member is separated from the department for any extended period of time prior to reentering the department, whether that be vacation, a suspension or anything that takes someone away from the department for a, a period of time, we will retest prior to reentry uh, to your assignment. Um, so that's one step. So when we hit the one, the hundred percent, which we will hit this week, um, the next phase would be to test those people who have been separated for any significant amount of time. From that point forward, we're working through what are best practices around the country, what some of the new information that's coming out with regards to testing. Um, how does the antibody uh, component play into testing? You know, if we've got negative tests on file, can we move to an antibody testing to see if those tests would be necessary uh, going forward? So there's really uh, uh, just not a lot of information right now as we as we work through this process. Um, one of the things we do know we will do, uh, if not forever, certainly uh, in the 
for the foreseeable future, and that is our pre-screenings uh, as we enter any work assignment, and that is the uh, the health questionnaire and the temperature uh, screening, which we think is extremely beneficial because we have had some, some circumstances uh, where some people uh, did not pass the health screening and we found it necessary to test them. Uh, but to your specific question, we, we've got a phase one, if you will, uh, and that's the, the testing. Phase two is to test those uh, who uh, have been uh, separated from the job for a period of time any additional phases are still being built, and we're talking that through as a team, and we'll report that to the board uh, as we progress through it. Okay, great. Uh, just one more thing, Madam Chair. Uh, last week I asked about um, the HEROES Act that was going in place that was extending that to the families of uh, first responders that if something happened with them, they would be extended some of those benefits. I believe Ms. White found some of the, uh, the email language of the act and I'm gonna ask her on this board on the meeting right now to share that with you so that the department is abreast of it. Um, so that we're paying attention to our officers that may be exposed to, to the virus and we may be taking these thing, this, this thing home to our families. So there is some legislation out there to include the families of uh, first responders along with the uh, line of duty death portion of it when they added that to they added the coronavirus to that that portion is extending that to the families that may be infected as well. That's fantastic. That's it, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Any other questions, Commissioners? Yeah, Madam Madam Chair. Commissioner Bell. I, I think that we clearly understand the role of uh, the Detroit Police Department under the leadership AC White and Chief Craig. But I think we need to hear from the mayor office, uh, the council office. They have a tremendous staff, and we need to get an update in terms of what they are doing in terms of filling the gap with young people, prevention, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, they have district managers in all the district. They have a deputy manager in all the district, and each council person has seven persons on their staff. So we need to engage them uh, in terms of having dialogue in terms of prevention and area of the, city commitment, not just on DPD. Let's not put this burden on the DPD. Uh, let's put this burden on the city of Detroit. They have a tremendous resource and community engagement, as you well know. We all witnessed that. So i just like to invite them at some point in time, the next two or three weeks, to hear from the office and hear from uh, the council office in terms of how they're approaching the issue that we're going to face this summer. Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair. You're speaking specifically on the youth. I'm, I'm speaking of community engagement. Well, primarily to you, when you have 500 people show up downtown, uh, that's concerned me. But also, we have to engage uh, not just young people, young adults, well, networking with the census and all that going on. I wish we could deputize those 500 people that showed up to go out in the community to sign these people up for the census. Right. That would be their community service. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Com Commissioner Burton. Uh, um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Burton. Hi. Uh, you know, pertaining to uh, Detroit youth being in downtown, uh, I believe someone said it was over five thousand youth. Just to uh -huh. uh, elaborate, it is because of poor leadership in Detroit, you know, let's give Detroit kids something to do. Let's channel that energy and find something for our youth to do. You know, not to mention that We can't hear you, Commissioner Burton. I'm going to buy him a phone or something. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> I have a question. Let's do something for our youth. All right. Thank you. Commissioner. Um, yes. Commissioner Davis. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, my question, AC White, a, as a result of these uh, promotions, are we going to be hiring more Detroiters or more people for the police force? Sir, I will 
through the chair, I, sir, I will tell you that uh, First Assistant Chief Stair uh, works tirelessly uh, at that process. And as you are aware, um, the academy is, is under my span. And uh, she started at 40 for us to train last week. And I know that the goal is to continue uh, at a rate, if not at 40, very close to it for the foreseeable future. Uh, so, and the goal is it's always to recruit the traders, uh, to give uh, the traders the same opportunities that we had uh, coming through up, coming up through the department. I don't know if um, first is still on the on the call, but if, if she'd like to chime in, uh, please do so. Yeah. But to answer your question, uh, Commissioner, yes, the, the goal is to recruit at a high rate uh, and certainly to hire Detroiters. And um, we, we, are, we are open for business and, and at the academy. Uh, we have well over 100 recruits in the academy right now. And uh, we are looking uh, to, to hire more. So if you know anyone, please send them our way. We would love to uh, get an application on file and start the process. Thank you. All right. With that, thank you, sir. At this time, uh, commissioners, we have the presentation from the um, the budget report from DPD fiscal quarter three. At this time, and that's going to be Mr. Oh. Madam Chair, it's uh, Agency CFO Mr. Nazarko, and also we're trying to locate. Assistant first assistant chief stair and so we're still trying to locate her in the participants list. Okay, thank you uh, Good afternoon uh, Madam chair good afternoon commissioners uh, Good afternoon. This is good afternoon, Marco, good afternoon uh, the agency CFO and I'm going to present to you the uh, uh, budget reports uh, for the quarter yeah. ending March 1st 2000. Yes Channel 2020. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to move the slide, so at, uh, unless you, am I able to to move the slides, Melanie? No, you're not. But they're moved. They moved it to the next one. I think. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, the reports. The reports that that were uh, submitted were the budget to actual revenues and expenses in detail. Uh, the second one, I did not get a chance to get that together by the deadline, so the grants fund available report will not be presented at this time. Forfeiture funds are in the report. The DPD facilities report from GSD is um, on the slides, and then the uh, active grant assessment report is the last slide. Uh, the quarter ending on March 31st, 2020, uh, the amended budget for that, or the original budget, was uh, $37.7 million, as you see on the slide. The actual amount was $14.2 million, for a variance of almost $23.5 million. The variance in this uh, quarter does not represent the actual amounts. It is merely the timing of the receipt of the uh, revenues uh, from the department, and mainly the income tax and utility users tax, which comprises the the bulk of our revenues uh, do not get booked until uh, May. So you will see uh, our projection is that all the revenues will uh, will come a little bit under budget uh, uh, because of the what transpired in the fourth quarter. For the third quarter, uh, we were on target. The total expenditures that you see on the slide for the uh, uh, first three quarters were $235 million, the, the budgeted amount. The actuals came down uh, to uh, $229.8 million for a variance of $5 million. And the net tax cost, which is the revenues, uh, the expenditures minus the revenues, uh, was $197 million uh, budgeted versus $215 million uh, actuals. And again, that difference is mainly due to the timing differences of the revenues for the uh, third quarter of 2020. Again, the date was March 31st, 2020. Uh, the total revenues uh, 
the, the actual revenues for the third quarter again were 14.1 million dollars. The total uh, expenditures uh, actually were 229 million dollars for a net tax cost of 250 million dollars. Just for the public out there, the net tax cost uh, is the amount of expenditures that is not covered by the revenues that we bring in the department uh, in the, the DPD. The uh, amended budget for the entire uh, for fiscal year 2020 uh, is $317.5 million, and the total revenue is uh, a little short of $60 million for a net tax cost of $257.7 million. Uh, this is uh, basically summarizing the previous two slides, uh, the, uh, the uh, annualized pro uh, projections, which you see in the middle column, is that we project to bring revenues uh, of $57.7 million uh, at the end of the, uh, this fiscal year, which is end of June, and the total expenditures we projecting, uh, or we were projecting at that time, the end of March, uh, to be $314 million short, a little short of $314 million versus a total expenditures budget of $317.5 million. Uh, this report, uh, which is uh, uh, given to you on this slide but is submitted as an attachment, uh, is coming from the uh, uh, GSD, uh, the facilities uh, report, that shows the uh, uh, that shows the projects that are ongoing at the police department uh, and the uh, the facility that uh, where the project is taking place, the contract amount, the funding source, uh, the description, and what stage of the uh, project are we in currently is under the milestone phases. Uh, so, yeah, as you see them, uh, majority of these projects are funded by. Uh, UTGO bonds that were issued by the city, uh, from the city by, uh, almost two years ago, and uh, most of them are on target to uh, to be completed as planned as a schedule. Because as you know, the uh, UTGO bonds have a deadline by which the amount must be spent or uh, or cannot be spent after that deadline. On the uh, forfeiture activity as of March 31st, 2020. We uh, brought, uh, or the revenue from the state forfeitures was $868,000. The expenditures was $1.5 million. And on the uh, federal forfeiture front, uh, uh, we did not have any expenditures, did not incur any expenditures for the first, for the quarter ending March 31st. Uh, however, we brought in $45,000 uh, on the forfeiture revenue from the federal source. Uh, on the fleet side, uh, uh, we purchased 13 general assignment sedans, and the total purchase price was $315,000. And this is a, a high uh, overview of the uh, active grant assessments for the uh, uh, police department. And as you can see from that slide, uh, there are some uh, some uh, commitments that the council approval is in process and the mental health first uh, aid training. And again, please, uh, you know, some of them may have been approved after the March 31st. But this report was as of that date. And the scrap tire grant strategies and DT energy tax and support grant were in process during that time. Uh, Fundraise to date were $1.39 million uh, and the number of awards and number of founders uh, five apiece. The grant score at 95%, which is actually a really good score, and the department is working to, uh, to even uh, go ahead on that. And with that, uh, again, there are attachments that I uh, don't have here, but uh, I would like to, uh, I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions that the uh, commissioners uh, may have. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Nizarko. Any questions uh, for from any of the commissioners? Commissioner Davis. Uh, yes. Uh, question: Are you anticipating an uh, increase or decrease as it relates to utility tax for public safety in Detroit? Uh, 
the utility tax, we do not expect a decrease uh, as a result of the, uh, the virus uh, situation. However, we are expecting a decrease on the income tax route. Collections. Any other questions, commissioners? Uh, Reverend Holly, Madam Chairperson. Yes, sir. You, you acknowledging me? Yes, sir. Commissioner Holly, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Madam Chairperson, I th I'm always impressed with the, uh, with the report uh, from the uh, budget director. But my, uh, forgive me if I, if I somehow don't rem I just don't remember. What, what, what kind of money are we putting in recruitment? Can you, t can you pull that out, uh, if not now, some other time? How much money do we have for recruitment? Uh, the, the recru uh, if I may, uh, may answer that, uh, the recruitment, uh, there is a lot of money in training and uh, HR, but one uh, sum of money that I can, uh, I can tell you the certainty is the uh, advertising campaign that the department has launched close to $1 million to advertise and recruit Detroiters uh, and kids from the city of Detroit to go through our uh, academy. So that's the amount that has been earmarked for advertising ongoing. And the other parts of recruitment uh, uh, fall into different buckets, such as uh, from the academy to, uh, to HR efforts uh, to, uh, to uh, promotions that you just did today and all that. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? Thank you, Mr. Nazarko. Um, Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I appreciate your, um, your reports. Um, we look forward to hearing from you about the grants, though. I, I, will. I okay. definitely will, so. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, we have the presentation from uh, Mr. Bertram Johnson. Good afternoon, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, and through you to the membership and uh, all those in attendance and others. Very good to see you all. And um, I just want to start my comments by also recognizing the um, life uh, by those is, uh, the gentlemen in Minnesota and, and frankly across the country. Um, I'm very proud of our police department and the way that they not only conduct themselves but continue to interact with the community um, that is, frankly, trying to find its footing uh, in an America that's ever-changing and evolving. Uh, and so my, hats are off, my hat is off to uh, our police command staff and those in the rank and file for trying to do the best job uh, they can. That, that absolutely ends up, at the end of the day, being one of the best jobs done across the country. Um, and so uh, I also wanted to take a, a quick moment um, to highlight the fact that I sent you all a letter um, which really crystallizes my comments on behalf of the uh, Detroit Association. And so I will belabor those points because I trust you all to read them. You are all a very intelligent individuals. I do want to um, highlight one portion of the letter before I uh, get into my commentary. Uh, I've had a, I've grown a very, very good working relationship with Captain Michael Parrish uh, and by extension, A.C. White, uh, and I've always enjoyed a great relationship with uh, Chief James Craig and those in his uh, administrative team, uh, Trish Stein, comes to mind. And uh, I had a conversation, I had an occasion to have a quick conversation this morning with Captain Parrish about uh, things, some things that were in the letter that I presented, and I want to make very clear uh, that when I indicated uh, in one portion of the letter that there were communications that weren't coming by way of written communication or email communication, that that is an error on my part. And I want to take responsibility for that. You all strike that uh, from the letter and uh, give it a weight. Um, and so with that, I, I want to get started and I appreciate your indulgences. I want to thank the chief. I want to thank AC White. I want to thank Captain Parrish. I want to thank Dave Masseron, the chief financial officer for the city. Uh, for working with us since I last came and introduced myself to the body uh, and talked about the um, the wish to come back before you and to present on behalf of the Detroit Towing Association. Uh, together, that team on the city side has uh, put forth a lot of good faith to uh, sort of write some things we all consider an error or to improve the relationship between the DPD and the Detroit Towing Association. Um, and we hope 
that they have seen us and experienced us in the same way. This process of uh, trying to drive into place some better protocols or policies on behalf of the um, Towing Association has been eye-opening uh, because frankly, we have here a situation that's, uh, it's common, but it's a bit unique. Uh, we have private towers who are working in concert with a uh, department under the city's leadership, more specifically the DPD, and they're trying to make sure that they have the best possible climate under which to operate. And that's not always easy, given some of the politics that are at, at play. Um, Captain Parrish has contended, uh, continued to remind me that some of why we're here is because the Michigan Towing Association, and I say Michigan because that's different than the Detroit Towing Association, particularly the police authorized tours. The Michigan Towing Association thought it a um, smart move to go before the Michigan legislature and we had no input. I was not uh, with the Detroit Towers. As a matter of fact, they weren't collected under this umbrella of a towing association for themselves at that time, but the Michigan Towing Association petitioned the Michigan legislature they got a bill passed. Uh, that bill in the minds of the city and EBD, and I can't say I disagree with them, threatened their viability. And so um, the DPD rushed to put a process in place so that they could be grandfathered into the law. And I can't say that if I weren't, if I were part of the DPD's command staff, I wouldn't have done the same thing. But I point that out because uh, I want this body to know and appreciate that the Detroit Towing Association has really only wanted to work into place some things that would make the process better. And so together, I think um, we have achieved that. I did in fact provide you all a copy of the good faith letter that um, Chief Craig gave us, gave to the Detroit Towing Association that evidenced some very realistic um, changes for us that make us uh, very happy in this relationship. Um, and I won't, again, I won't read those off because you all can read that in your own space and time, but I want to acknowledge that letter because it improves where we are. Uh, what you have before you in the letter that I submitted to you is really just uh, a continuing list of our thoughts and concerns. Um, and it's reduced in some manner to some of the things that we wish uh, for the future. Chief among them is the idea that um, we believe that if the Detroit Police Department in its capacity to tow vehicles was in relation with us uh, or with the other police authorized towers, that that would be the most fair, most equitable, and the easiest for any interested party to really understand what is happening with towing across the city uh, for the police authorized towers. Um, Captain Parrish has told me that that is a non-starter. I accept that. Uh, but I do, uh, on behalf of my client, have to continue to talk about what we believe is both the value and the virtue uh, of that process. We've come a long way. Um, the DPD, is, especially as represented by Captain Parrish, has made, um, have taken large steps toward us to try to accommodate our wishes and improve this relationship. Uh, beyond rotation, one of the things that the uh, Towing Association is very hopeful for is if you look back at the 2013 uh, tow rules that were put forward, there were uh, there were different individuals who comprised that commission at that time. But one thing that is that does stand out is the idea that there was an agreed upon five dollar per year increase that would have happened uh, for the towers. And so uh, by today's numbers and in 2020, uh, the Towing Association and individual members are not making about $35 uh, extra as uh, a component of what was agreed to. And so we would ask the commission to take that under advisement and to um, assist us with getting to at least $5 represents one year and not the seven years that we haven't gotten that increase. Uh, and if you would take that under advisement. Um, we also want the uh, commission and everyone to know and recognize and appreciate that the police authorized towers that are before you are probably the cream of the crop in terms of towing, public towing across the city of Detroit. We understand that there are bad apples in every industry um, and that uh, there was a particular bad apple in this industry that cast a aspersion, frankly, on the entire towing community. And uh, in many instances, when the Towing Association for Detroit shows up to have discussions 
we know that that is a fabric of the history of tolling, but that doesn't represent who we are at present. And so we always want to be separated from that debacle. Um, it will be noted uh, more like more than likely that there may in fact be one or more individual uh, towing companies that uh, are the subject of an investigation. Um, and we don't believe that any of those organizations comprise the Detroit Towing Association. But I bring that up, I bring that about because I want the commission to know that the membership of the Detroit Towing Association is doing every single solitary thing it can to not only comply uh, with the rules, regulations, and protocols, but also to exceed those uh, uh, requirements because it's in our best interest to do so. Uh, and when we ask things of the police brass and the commission and a city council and a mayor's office, uh, that we're not asking in the dark and we're not asking in a vacuum. We are, in fact, uh, doing our part to make sure we keep our end of the bargain up. And so um, that's important to that's important to be noted. Um, and I think the last thing uh, that I want to point out, and then perhaps there are some questions I wanted to save some time, um, is that in our quest to uh, achieve what we call fairness, equity, and parity, um, and thankfully the DPD is going to be allowing us as a component of the good faith agreement that uh, Chief Craig put forward to, they're going to open the books to us uh, beginning at the end of July to take a look and understand that they are in fact um, doing no more than 25% of the available tolls across the city. Uh, we're going to continue as we perhaps move from a permitting process to a contractual arrangement uh, that's going to be set up at the city and I, I think overseen by the Detroit City Council and there's a new ordinance that's been proposed that we will sit in on. We've been invited to that table to have that discussion. We're going to continue to frame our conversations about our wishes through the lens of fairness, equity, and parity. And so we always believe that if we could get DPD in that rotation, um, that, that that's going to be the best possible scenario for all of us. Um, with that, I want to stop there because, I, again, I know you can read that letter and you'll see at the very end of that letter, Madam Chair, I, uh, it was my prayer that you all would take that letter into consideration and then provide us a response. And just let us know what you all think as the, uh, the body that we will appeal to on these issues. With that, I'll stop. And if there are any questions, criticisms or concerns, I'm happy to address them. Thank you, Chair. Let's hold. Come here, Commissioner Hold. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for your presentation today, and as well as this uh, packet of information, whereby it's clear that you are in a position to support your your client, um, DTA, under a philosophical uh, disagreements. You uh, note that you that your organization does not believe that the uh, Detroit Police Department should have 25% of the overall business of towing. Now, um, my, my car was towed some four years ago. And from what I can recall, there was no interaction between the, the towing company, the Detroit Police Department, and me. So I ended up as I recall, paying $375 to get my car returned to me. Now, is there a case that if your car is towed by DPD, you're not handled with that kind of towing cost? Well, it's an interesting uh, question, you ask, and thank you for it, uh, through you, Madam Chair, to the commissioner. Um, a couple of things stick out. Number one, there's a, an administrative fee that is tacked on to the standard towing fee, it's a, it's a component, it's, it's a legal thing and it has to happen. Um, one of the things that we know that private tours wrestle with is the fact that when people come into their shops, they are saddled with, uh, they, they get the, the, the community's angst, their concern about how high the fees are. And so one of the things that we have talked about is separating those fees so that the city of Detroit's fee could be gathered in another space. Perhaps it will require uh, citizens to visit a police precinct, maybe it could be a kiosk, Certainly, there are um, technological advances that support the splitting of that fee. But to answer your question, uh, our fees are not as high as they are um, shown to be when the public interacts with us. And so it's a little bit of a misnomer uh, what people are charged when they come in because they think that, you know, that's all the fee that's actually going to the towing company. <clears throat> Okay, um, in light of that fact, through the chair, 
And then I did pay the $375 to the towing company. Uh-huh. And, and again, a set, I'm suggesting that if uh, DPD had towed my car, I would have paid less. Why then could oh. your company not be more competitive? Well, I think we are competitive. Uh, I'm going to invite, there's going to be a couple of our members that are going to uh, speak in public comment. I'm going to invite, if you would allow me, uh, them to speak to that so I don't, I don't misspeak. Uh, but I think we are very competitive. As a matter of fact, we are um, in a position, we believe, to absorb all liability and all cost out of the system. And when you talk about competitiveness, uh, we want to take Detroit's liabilities out of the system by shouldering that on our own. We feel like uh, if DPD or the city is in business for itself, well, if there's an accident, if there is a lawsuit, uh, if there, there are employee cost salaries and uh, legacy costs, we believe that the city absorbs that. On its face, I'm going to ask one of our members, uh, particularly our president, Barry Foster, to speak to it because uh, I think he can talk about uh, the very competitive nature of our uh, costs, not versus DPD, but if you take the two uh, side by side. Thank you. Madam Chair. Mr. Brown. Uh, yeah, thank you for your presentation, uh, Mr. Johnson, addressing your, uh, your client. But for years, the client, people and the citizens of the city of Detroit have been gouged with towing fees and storage fees and confused with what their cars are. Uh, I'm pretty sure some of us have had horror stories. I myself has had them. And since DPD has gotten involved in the towing, a lot of these complaints are really disappearing. But that's, I just want to bring that to your attention. But the thing that concerns me is that you're, you're asking about monitoring and oversight in your letter. This board is the oversight of towing. And that's where you guys are making your mistakes because you're bouncing all around everyone else and you're not coming to talk to this board. This board is the oversight for towing. We are that independent monitor that if you have a problem, then you bring it before this board. If you have a disagreement with DPD, and then it has to be, you have to escalate it to this board. But everyone is bouncing all around to all these other entities when the buck stops right here with this board. And this is the first step of what you're doing today. This board has a, has a committee that, that, that's in charge of the oversight of, of, of dealing with towing. I believe uh, Commissioner Bell heads that up. So, I mean, I don't know if you, I don't know, if you know that, but the oversight is this board. And then this, this board is vested with the oversight of the towing in the city of Detroit, governed by the Detroit Police Department. So if you have a disagreement with the chief and, 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 and anyone else in, in a police department, you, you're doing the right thing now by coming before this board so that we can talk about it. And, but like I said before, that for years, citizens in the city of Detroit have experienced the nightmares and horrors. I'm not saying these people did it. That's only coming because I know I, I see your list. There's some good, reputable names on here. There's some people on this list that I've called personally or, or, or given numbers to, to, to that need a tow truck, that need a jump or something, and they were there, and they did excellent service. But at this point, I'm just saying that somewhere along the line, a lot of those complaints and a lot of those issues with people not knowing where their vehicles are, they can't get their vehicle. you know, these, these, these shops are playing these games, are telling people that uh, well, if I tell you my registration is in the car, you tell me I can't let you in the car because you don't have a registration. So now I have to go back and get something to comply with your rule. And in that time, you're stacking on more storage fees on my vehicle because that, that's been a game that's been played by res that, that residents have experienced and complained about for years in this city about towing. And I think right now I understand about the, the, the rotation and everything, but I think you, you guys need to sit down with this board and talk about what and the department and talk about what a fair uh, uh, thing look like. Cause I don't think 25% of what they're doing is a lot. I really don't with the money that the, the city has invested in towing and the jobs that it has provided to citizens of the city of Detroit that are taxpayers. You know, I don't think 25% of any market like that is a lot. Madam chair, if I might. Yes, sir. Uh, through you to uh, commissioner Brown. Thank you for those. Uh, points. I pointed. Every, I, I wrote them down as best I could. Um, and let me take them as you stated them. Um, you'll recall that I presented myself to this body, this honorable body, uh, sometime. Uh oh, I think he's gone. Off. Uh, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, are you able to hear me? No. Okay. Uh, I presented myself to this body so that uh, you were my first stop. You know, I understand your your oversight um, position, and I know what you all are constituted to do. So I came to see you first. You were the first stop on that train, and uh, it's just taking this time. And, you know, COVID has gotten in the way and, and put us all in a scenario. It's taking this amount of time to get before this body. Uh, so I definitely understood that you all as a composed body are the first report. But uh, when I really speak about that, that independent monitor, I was always also talking about inside the police department. That's a separate and distinct um, kind of conversation. Uh, but let me also say, and I'm not afraid to say his name, Gaspar Fiore messed up towing, uh, towing across this city. Of what many of he he had his <clears throat> several different contents. He infected those places, and they're acting the way he wanted them to act. Now, I will say this. Um, we don't make the rules up. We don't make the rules up. We are we are held to those rules. And so when someone shows up and says, hey, can I get my car? And um, there are some rules in place. They actually have to say what those rules are. Now, we do need we want to examine some of those rules. We want to make some of those rules a bit more flexible and amenable uh, to the to the community. But at the same time, uh, Commissioner Holt asked whether or not um, there's a disparity between DPD and private towing rates. And no, there's not. There's not. So they're not charging a lesser rate. And then somehow uh, we're high and we're price gouging. We can't change the rules. We certainly can't change them midstream. But we wanted to appeal to you all uh, for some of those rules changes. That's why I came in and, and introduced myself six months ago. And I'm happy we're having this discussion today. But um, we're where we are today. And so this is the beginning of what we hope is a long and fruitful relationship and a better communication about what to do in the future. Madam Vice Chair, um, at this time, Madam Vice Chair, if you could please take over. Uh, Madam Chairperson uh, is disconnected, but we're trying to get her back online. Thank you. Yes, I saw that. Uh, are there any, thank you again, uh, Mr. Johnson. Are there any qu uh, other questions from commissioners? Um, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Bell. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Johnson coming before this body, but I agree with Commissioner Brown. Some of the concerns is, is well based in over the years, as we well know. And DPD has made a difference in terms of the towing issue in the city of Detroit and, the, and what we have witnessed. Uh, but I'd like to know, uh, I think we uh, six months have been too long. I think that we got to have that dialogue. Commissioner Brown uh, indicated that we are that body that you need to be aggressively interacting with by charter. We have that responsibility. It's not the council responsibility. Uh, I think that uh, we got to have that ongoing dialogue. But also, I hear you talk about what, I mean, I need to know what is your commitment to the city of Troy as far as your community involvement, all the issue. I want to, what are you giving back? And perhaps you can give us a, a brief answer, but I need more detailed in terms of the issue we have with our youth, the issue that we have in the community, what are the Detroit tours who from Detroit are addressing in our community? Thank you for the question. Um, and I think the I think the chair of the commission, uh, who I've interacted with for uh, the entirety of my time representing, <coughs> uh, will evidence to you that I've been uh, hoping to get before you to have a presentation in these conversations. Uh, so I didn't just wait until last month to petition. I petitioned immediately. Uh, and it's just been a matter of us waiting to be scheduled. Um, and I hope that I hope that it really does, uh, from a place of sincerity, resonate with you. Uh, but secondarily speaking, these are companies that have been around some since 1980 doing business, not just with the city, but with the police department. And uh, to a person, to a company, they will all tell you of their not only their community involvement, and the way that they've embraced the local community that they're a part of, I can tell you um, just off the top of my head, I know Troy's Towing has been petitioned by his community where his uh, shop is and where it has been over the years to be a part of everything down to community barbecues and picnics and giveaways and school, uh, uh, going back to school programs. So each of them will tell you that story. I invite them to. I um, also want to point out, uh, Madam Chair, that there is uh, a problem with um, Barry Foster, who I know is on, who had his hand up, he's he, somehow 
maybe he's not in the queue. And if somebody could take a look at that, because he was going to represent some of the interests of the tours and uh, public comment. Miss um, um, White, Chair Carter is still muted. Chair Carter. Um, so, I should, so I should proceed? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you again, Mr. Johnson. Other commissioners, are there questions to Mr. Johnson? Yeah, Madam Chairperson. Um, Reverend Holly. Yes, sir. Commissioner Holly. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, and thank you for the report, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson, my concern is always uh, in terms of your representation. Uh, I'd like to know if it's possible, if I'm out of order, I'm sure the, the, the commission uh, the commissioner will tell me that, and that is in terms of diversity in your organization, and also in terms of when you make an important uh, a, a representing the whole group, I'd like to know, you know, what is it? I'd like to have some transparency in terms of the kind of money you guys are making over the year. Uh, and then also, what do you do in putting back into the community? I think it's very important. Diversity, one, if it's, if it's possible. Uh, and also in terms of, of what are you all getting out of the pot in terms of the, 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 the relationship with the city. And then also, if you can give us an idea what not one person is doing, but collectively is who you reporting for. What are collectively are you doing uh, with youth, youth programs, educational programs, but specifically so that if it's possible that we can help you, let us help you. But we don't want to help you if you're not helping us and, and the community. Madam Chair, uh, through you to uh, Reverend Holly. Uh, I, uh, as I sat here and just made some notes about this, I'm reminded that I should probably get you all a secondary document that evidences that uh, you all have asked about uh, what these businesses are earning, what they're making, what they're doing in the community to support the community, what they're doing for youth organizations. Uh, and those are all very real questions that I'm happy to get you a report back on. So I'm just okay. not giving you uh, one or two versions of what people are doing. And I will promise you that uh, document back before your next regularly scheduled meeting. That's easy for us to do. Uh, but I also want to end by saying this. Um, you're talking, you're looking at a collection of businesses that have given everything that they have to the city. And when people, when it was fashionable to leave and move and relocate businesses, they did not do that. These are women owned organizations. Uh, we have some of them, we have uh, minority owned or, uh, associations. They're spread out throughout the city and communities that are uh, rich and in communities that are not so rich. Uh, and these are people who are not afraid to stand and del deliver and fight for the citizenry of this town. And they've done so all at the same time while trying to shoulder the burden and responsibility of what has happened to them economically. Uh, many of them are paying storm water runoff bills uh, that are very high. Uh, they're continuing to pay the uh, rise with the tide in terms of taxes and insurance. Uh, but I'm happy to get you that information because I think it will paint the kind of picture where uh, what Commissioner Holly just suggested uh, would be beneficial for both parties, that a better relationship, a deeper relationship, because you understand who they are can be fostered. So I'm happy to get you that information. Um, one other question through Chair Carter. Yes. Thank you. Um, again, Mr. Johnson, now you, um, you, made by, you, you noted by name other towing companies who are, have, I guess, a negative reputation. Now, the fact that your uh, company, one of the towing companies of your company is being investigated, how do you reconcile the allegations against that one company as you highlight those other companies by name? Well, number one, uh, Chairwoman, I don't, I don't know anything about an investigation. Uh, I've heard the word. I don't know the subject of an investigation. I don't know the component parts. Uh, of any investigation, but let me be clear about this. Uh, this organization is an organization uh, that is full of integrity and anyone who doesn't follow the rules, uh, this membership isn't trying to shield anyone. So if there's someone who's out of sorts, uh, they're gonna be dealt with appropriately uh, and, and there are mechanisms for that. And so the group that I interact with every day that comprise the Detroit Towing Association, uh, they're very forthright, they're very honest, uh, they're not hiding anything and uh, I think Captain Parrish will attest to the fact that uh, when he approaches in his normal 
daily exercise for, for of, of being the tone monitor. When he talks to any of these companies, he's been able to uh, to get at the truth. And so we're not hiding anything. We're happy to bring anything forward you all want. Thank you. Okay, so I wanted to bring you uh, together with the Detroit, um, the DPD uh, towing um, Captain uh, Parrish so that we can have a complete understanding of everything. <clears throat> and I was not aware of the extent of the, what you wanted to present, but I wanted to, to get you uh, together. So with that, thank you for uh, bringing everything to our attention and um, we will, uh, uh, get back with you with regards to the information that you provided with us. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate you all. You're welcome. Um, commissioners, at this time, we have the presentation, the DPD toll, pre toll presentation by um, Captain Parrish. Uh, good afternoon, uh, board. I'm just waiting for the PowerPoint to come up. Uh, Commissioner Carter, thank you so much. The board, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, just uh, to begin, uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, I received a number of questions from the board. I believe it was 38 in total. The, the questions spanned a number of different topics. Uh, and uh, I, I don't think I'll be able to get to all of the different topics that were addressed in those questions, but we did provide a written response, which has either been trans has either been transmitted by now or will be transmitted in the very near future. I'll try to hit the major topics uh, that have been uh, uh, that that were discussed in the correspondence that we received from the board, uh, and. Uh, just walk the uh, bring the board up to speed and walk uh, uh, walk everyone through the process as it exists right now. Uh, let me note that I am going to be talking about uh, towing. I just want to emphasize on the front end that I will be speaking of matters that may invite some people to view the towing industry as absolutely negative. Uh, it is not DPD's intention to paint towing with a broad brush, uh, but there are facts that have to be discussed because it helps explain uh, where we are today. And I will emphasize that I've been meeting uh, and speaking with uh, Mr. Bertram Johnson on a regular basis, and I would just echo his sentiments that we have a good relationship, we have been communicating, and I'm very proud of the, uh, uh, of the recent commitments that DPD was able to make to council relative to towing, and I think it represents a lot of hard work. Uh, as council's aware, DPD did recently transmit, I'm sorry, as the board's aware, DPD did recently submit a report to council committing, among other things, to operating within 25% of all of the towing uh, at this point. Okay, with this preface in mind, I'll begin the presentation. If we could just go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, as the board is aware, towing has had a very turbulent history in the city of Detroit and the Detroit Police Department. On the screen now are just a few of the stories that have peppered local periodicals. I know we heard from some commissioners that uh, have expressed concerns about how towing is operated. Certainly DPD uh, shared in those concerns, which is one of the reasons why the processes that are in place now are in fact in place. Again, I'm going to take a moment just to reiterate, DPD does not intend on painting towing with a broad brush. Uh, t uh, the police authorized towers include some very good companies, and I'm sure you'll be hearing from some of those companies tonight. Uh, unfortunately, there are, as the board will be voting later, concerns with the performance of some of the towing companies. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, amidst uh, the concerns that uh, were on the board, uh, DPD took a number of reformative measures um, starting in December 2016. A towing monitor was selected, that was me, uh, and I held the rank of lieutenant at the time. And in this position, I answered directly to Assistant Chief White on towing issues. So towing was no longer a isolated subject. By bringing it, uh, uh, by putting a lieutenant over it, uh, later a captain over it, and by bringing it close to the Assistant Chief's office, issues that would occur in towing could be brought to light and appropriately dealt with. And since the uh, this action was taken in 2016, 
A number of tow companies have been removed from the police authorized towing rotation. DPD has been working with the Office of the Inspector General and other agencies uh, to take action against towers that have failed to uh, perform as they were required to under the rules of police authorized towing or under Michigan uh, law. Okay. Uh, could we go to the uh, next slide, please? Uh, in addition to reforming police authorized towing, that is towing activity conducted by the private towing sector, uh, DPD also began looking outside to other agencies to see what exactly uh, DPD could do to bring it in line with the practices of other police agencies. Uh, we conducted a survey, and in doing that survey, we learned that other police agencies uh, recently had began absorbing uh, some or all of the towing and storage operations in their jurisdiction. Uh, and the advantages of this are, are, are pretty uh, well understood, uh, because when you bring something internally into the police department, it becomes subject to civilian oversight. It becomes subject to many laws designed to promote transparency, such as FOIA laws. It also uh, would, at least in DPD's case, and I'm sure other police agencies' case, put the burden of uh, investigating the internal aspects of the towing into the hands of internal affairs, which has some of the best investigators out there. It also puts towing front and center on the department's radar. So there were all of these benefits. We decided to investigate. Regrettably, and I know Bert Johnson stated the Michigan Towing Association spearheaded this legislation. For purposes of this presentation, I'm not going to dispute that. I just talk about this, again, only to bring the board up to speed on what was done and why it was done. Uh, but while we were doing this, uh, Lansing was, pat was spearheading legislation to prevent local municipalities and police agencies from establishing their own policies. And as a result of the new law, which passed, it was signed by Governor Rick Schneider in July of 18, DPD had only a couple of months to establish itself as a towing and storage operation. Uh, and fortunately, in September 2018, DPD was able to uh, get ahead of that deadline, establish itself as a towing operation, and with this board's support, uh, commence this uh, uh, very important activity for the Detroit Police Department and the citizens of Detroit. Ne next slide, please. Uh, now, we well understood the impact that this sudden incursion into a sector that had been occupied only by uh, private towers would occur. So DPD's goal in establishing its towing operation was twofold. One was to grandfather its rights so that the new law would not uh, bear over us and impact us or stop us from establishing uh, our rights to tow and store vehicles. That was the first prong, was just to grandfather our rights. But the second prong was to do it in a way that did not put uh, that, that to do it in a responsible way that uh, did not put uh, private towing companies uh, out of business, to use fair discretion into how we deploy our trucks so that there is still uh, a market for the private towers to participate in the police authorized towing program. So for that reason, DPD, as you can see by the chart, DPD has only been towing approximately 23% of all police order tows. Furthermore, DPD does not participate in two other markets of, tow of towing, such as owner-authorized tows, these are your quote-unquote AAA tows, or private property impounds. We leave that to the private sector so that they still have opportunities to tow and still have opportunities to tow within the police-authorized towing program. Uh, and again, we do this while at the same time uh, our attempt to, our focus to grandfather DPD's rights to make its own policy decisions along with city council, along with the board of police commissioners. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, DPD towing has had a number of benefits. Currently, DPD has budgeted 15 vehicle operator positions. Uh, one half of all of our tow truck drivers are women, and this is very uncommon in the towing sector to have such a large group of women actually operating the tow trucks. 80% of all of our tow, trucker, uh, tow truck drivers are from Detroit. And 95% are from, are, are minority. 
going forward uh, in this coming fiscal year, uh, DP will have 20 positions budgeted. Now I say we are increasing the positions, but let me assure the board and the Detroit Towers Association that DPD will be adhering to chiefs uh, to the chief's report to council uh, to stay within 25% of the overall towing. And like Mr. Johnson said, DPD is going to open its books so that it has the same information that we have so that it shows we're living up to our commitments. Uh, DPD employs returning citizens. Uh, DPD does not require that you be an experienced tow truck driver in order to be employed. We're willing to train you. We're willing to get your skills up to speed. Okay. And uh, employees enjoy benefits just like other city employees do. This includes medical coverage, pension accruals, overtime opportunities, and other benefits. DPD also instituted with the board's assistance a fee waiver and hardship claim system whereby we can waive fees or at least reduce fees if there are situations such as you're the victim of the crime or if you're just uh, in an economic situation where you just can't afford your towing fees. And I'm happy to say that we developed this policy with the board and I think it's absolutely been great. Uh, DPD uh, has, this has also been a revenue generator. DPD has grossed more than $2.6 million dollars not since we started, but since DPD t since this current fiscal year started in July 1st, 2019. Uh, and there's been a special revenue fund created just so all of this money goes into one place that it can be used to first pay for the costs associated with DPD towing and then, uh, move, and then any residual to go back to, pol to support police operations. Next slide, please. Okay. I'm going to do a pretty hard transition because some of the questions involved uh, the towing process. Uh, so I'm going to do a hard transition away from DPD towing and just to introduce to the board uh, towing in its most general form. Uh, there are three universes of tows that all comprise towing. Uh, there's owner authorized tows. Like I said earlier, these are your AAA tows. When the owner, him or herself, calls for a tow and the tow is authorized by the owner, uh, this is what we call an owner-authorized tow. DPD does not participate in this market. Uh, somebody cannot call us up and say, I got a flat tire, send one of your city tow trucks out to come get us. We leave that to the private market uh, right now, to the private uh, towers. There's also a universe of tows called private property impounds. Uh, DPD's involvement in PPIs is very limited, and we, and we do not tow uh, vehicles at the request of private property owners. Again, this is a a universe of tows that we reserve to the private market and we let the private market handle those. DPD does investigate uh, uh, activities involving private property impounds. Uh, my office recently obtained a felony warrant against a non-authorized tower, so not, not a tower that's a member of the DTA and not a tower that tows for the Detroit Police Department. This is a non-authorized tower. And uh, as I said, my office recently obtained a felony warrant against a tower involved in an illegal PPI impound. So although DPD doesn't really regulate it as much as police authorized towing, uh, DPD still uh, takes uh, action when, uh, when a PPI goes criminal. Uh, and there's the third universe of tows, which is what we talk most about, and that's police ordered tows or police authorized tows. This is where a member of the Detroit Police Department or a government agency orders the vehicles towed. DPD is its own primary tower. Uh, although at this time we only do less, approximately 23% of the towing. Okay, when DPD towing is not available, based on how we deploy our trucks and how we staff uh, our trucks, uh, private towers are utilized. DPD, specifically the towing monitor myself, uh, monitors compliance with the police authorized towers, adherence to the uh, rules governing police authorized towing. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Uh, the primary uh, unit that investigates towing is the assets and licensing set, uh, section. This falls under management services. Um, I am uh, management services and I am the tow monitor. So this unit reports directly to me. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Now, although assets and licensing is the primary investigative and auditing entity, I actually communicate and receive information and monitor the activities of a number of different units within the Detroit Police Department. These are all of the units that contribute to making sure that the towing process is working and is adhering to all of the state laws which uh, govern police towing or towing in general. 
Uh, so towing is very complex, and uh, if you look at the towing laws, you'll see that they're very complex, they're very rich, there's a lot of information. It's a highly regulated industry, uh, which is one of the reasons why the police department devotes the resource that it does to making sure that everything in towing is legitimate. Next slide. Uh, I'm going to briefly walk the uh, board through a typical tow process uh, because uh, some of the questioning wanted to know about process. So let me give just a quick introduction. There's a front end of towing. Just what everybody sees, everybody sees the police officer on scene, the police uh, ordering the tow, the tow truck being dispatched, and the tow truck removing the vehicle. That's the front end, and that's the part that everybody sees. What most people don't see is the back end of towing, and that is where a lot of the work is actually done. And if we could go to the next slide, um, I'll talk about that. Because once the vehicle is actually on a lot, regardless of whether it's a private tow lot or a public tow lot, um, there, uh, there's a lot of administrative work that goes into that vehicle. Lean records have to be updated. Uh, notifications to the state have to be made if a vehicle was not redeemed by the owner. We have to do audits to make sure that if the owner does redeem the vehicle, that the towers are adhering to the authorized tow rates. Okay. In addition, if the vehicle is not redeemed, the department has to coordinate auctions. And there are a lot of guidelines uh, set forth by the state of Michigan to make sure that auctions are conducted a certain way so that vehicles that are impounded are not illegitimately driven to interested stakeholders that might want to get that price, that might want to get that vehicle. Um, so all auctions have to be public. Uh, all auctions have to take place, you know, they have to be advertised. Uh, auctions have to be documented uh, rigorously. The dispositions of vehicles have to be documented ri rigorously. And we always have to keep the lien database up to date with all information pertaining to that vehicle so that officers out in the field that encounter these vehicles know that it may have been impounded, that it may have been sold at auction, that a scrap certificate may have been issued. Next slide, please. These are just some of the laws, and there are many more. Uh, I was in a deposition uh, recently regarding towing, and I had a lawyer quite candidly tell me that the reason why I was asking me so many questions in my, in my deposition was that he had a very hard time understanding the towing laws. Uh, they are rich and very complex. Uh, as I said, these are just some of the laws that uh, the Abandoned Vehicle Task Force, Assets and Licensing, Forfeiture, all of these vehicles that touch uh, towing, uh, have to be mindful of so that we know that every vehicle is being uh, released or disposed of properly. Next slide. And that is uh, my report uh, on towing. I know I moved quickly. I'll be happy to take any questions uh, from the board on towing, DVD towing or towing in general. Thank you, Captain Parrish. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions? Commissioner Holt. Um, thank you again, uh, Captain uh, Parrish. When you sent your report to us, I don't know, six weeks or so ago, um, it provided me with, I guess, uh, sort of an understanding as it relates to the perhaps fraud that's involved in towing. Uh, because, it, again, in my personal uh, example, I really wasn't aware that the towing business had such a negative uh, reputation. Um, and in light of the fact that, again, one of the tow companies that uh, Mr. Johnson is representing, I guess I don't understand how we're going to reconcile that, that particular tow company as it relates to the job you have to in, ensure the integrity of the towing business. I'm just kind of up in the air. I, I don't understand, um, again, how, how are we going to reconcile the integrity of the towing business 
yet uh, Mr. Johnson says that he's not aware that one of his uh, clients is being alleged to uh, be involved in some questionable activities. So as the board surely understands, uh, this is a topic that I could not possibly discuss with Mr. Johnson because I cannot reveal facts under investigation. I guess it's going to be up to the Detroit Towers Association to communicate with one another and encourage every company's compliance with the tow rules and with Michigan law as it pertains to towing. Uh, and uh, the department will continue to do its job in monitoring the towing activity and to bring to the board, as we've committed to do, uh, the board being our oversight body, to bringing apparent violations of the towing uh, rules to the board's attention and uh, to request the board take action when appropriate. Um, through the chair, one other comment. Um, thank you, uh, Captain Parrish. Um, the benefit of uh, DPD employees is, is very impressive. It really uh, helps to uh, substantiate your, your involvement in, well, DPD's involvement in the towing business. Thank you again. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? Uh, Madam Chair. Commissioner Bell. Uh, I just want to commend Captain Parrish for and the leadership of A.C. White and address this issue. This has been something that the board, the past board, inherited years ago, and then we inherited, uh, you know, on our term of office, but there's no towing committee by the board at this time. Uh, but I'm very impressed in terms of DPD role in terms of handling towing. As uh, the captain indicated, it's serious business, a legal issue, and it's something that we all are not enthused about in terms of when your car gets towed. Uh, but I just want to say we come a long way in this area. I, I want to commend Mr. Johnson, Troy Torres, organizing uh, to address those concerns because at one time they were not in the loop of towing, uh, period. Uh, so, but we come a long way. So I just really want to commend the department. When you're talking about women towing, I was not aware of that in training these people. So uh, that's another area of employment for the city of Detroit, another income stream, but to also assist the system and people for gaining jobs and benefits. So I just want to, I cannot, uh, say enough in terms of commending uh, Captain Parrish and Chief Craig and AC White and the leadership of this department weighing in on a serious issue for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bell. Any other questions, comments, commissioners? I have a question. Commissioner Davis. Is there a reason why you're at 23% instead of 25%? Are you deliberately trying to keep it under 25 or do you plan to go to 25 uh, we, we want to operate within 25%. I, we, we are very strategic in how we deploy our trucks. I, I'd like to think that I'm, I'm, I'm so good at how we deploy our trucks that I can get right at 25%. We may come up short, but my goal is to make sure that we don't exceed 25% because that was, uh, uh, that was a part of the Chief's report. So we may be 24, we may be 23, but we're going to be up close to 25. Okay. Never surpassing it. Uh, Chief has my word. Any other questions, comments, concerns, commissioners? Thank you, Captain Parrish. And thank you, Chief White. Um, at this time, we will move on to the uh, report from the interim board secretary. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Honorable board, please refer to item number 10 on the agenda for the following incoming correspondence for this week. Number one, DPD facial recognition report, number 29. Number two, the honorable board received previously the DPD's promotional packet that includes items listed from A until G. Number three, correspondence from Sudnick Law Firm regarding the DPLA to proceed with promotions to the ranks of lieutenant, sergeant, and detective. Number four, BOPC OCI COVID-19 protocol and procedures discussing COVID-19 safe workplace policies and procedures and including the item from five to nine in terms of the Detroit Health Department policy COVID-19 safe workplace standards COVID-19 daily self-screening form executive order 2020-100 emergency order and amendments and 
Number nine includes the Detroit Towing Association material that was discussed earlier. Number 10, correspondence from Mr. Robert Glover, request of media comments. Number 11 includes the material concerning the memo regarding V and F Collision, Inc., which was transmitted previously and will be discussed during the new business section of the agenda. And the last item that the board received this week is the package from Sanders Law Firm, and that concludes the incoming correspondence for, our, for this week, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. White. Uh, at this time, commissioners, any unfinished business? Here. Yes, said, Madam Chair. One question under unfinished business. Yes, Commissioner uh, Bob. Last week, I asked uh, Dr. Anderson for some information about pertaining to the the demographics and the breakdown of uh, candidates that have been uh, disqualified and rejected from the Detroit Police Academy. So I just want to stay on top of that and, and see where they are with it. I haven't heard anything from her or maybe she may have sent it to Ms. White, but I still like to have that information. And I don't, I'm not clear if she thought I was thinking of next month I needed it, but I did ask for it as soon as possible so I could go through it and review it. Actually, um, I'll talk to you regarding that later. She'll be off for uh, until July, June 1st. She's off until June 1st. Okay. All right. Thank you. Madam Chair. Commissioner Burton. You know, um, I like it. If, if next week, if we can have on agenda where the HR director can come and explain to us uh, what, are, what the plan to advertise for BOPC vacant positions. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, I don't think we're going to move forward with anything until we are able to get back in the building and we can interview people as we see fit. Any other questions or comments, commissioners? Uh, under new business, Mr. Wyrick, you have a couple of things. We have a couple of things. We have an applicant uh, appeal from Cecil Costin, and we also have um, a request for a board hearing from BNF Collision Inc. submitted by the department. Mr. Wyrick, your, your mic is muted. Good afternoon through the chair and through the honorable body, to the honorable body. Uh, speaking very succinctly to the two issues, the uh, issue as it relates to Mr. Colston is that he's an applicant appeal. Uh, he was basically rejected by recruiting. As part of the, that process, he appealed to this honorable body to see if uh, the honorable body would basically change his, the, uh, his, would vote in terms of whether or not he should be afforded the opportunity to reapply into the application process. Uh, based upon my review of his file, he's 55 years old. Uh, the only negative um, background information is that back in 2006, he was convicted of uh, an amended charge of what you call uh, disorderly conduct, which is a misdemeanor at 36th District Court. Uh, that uh, followed from the original charge of offering to engage, which is a, a sexually related offense soliciting a prostitute. Uh, under MCO's policy, however, being convicted of a misdemeanor in and of itself does not disqualify one uh, from obtaining a uh, law enforcement license. Uh, recently, he has had some positive work history. He has, uh, for the past couple of years, worked as a security officer. Uh, so based upon that, my recommendation is to consider uh, his request. For a hearing. This is just for a hearing. Yes. OK. Madam Chair. Commissioner Bell. Uh, I would support Attorney Wyrick, uh, uh request to honor a hearing for Mr. Costin before this board to entertain his appeal process. I think that is how we conduct our business in the past. We give that <laughs> opportunity to come before this board. I second that, uh, Madam Chair. Commissioner Brown. We've been supported that the um, 
<coughs> applicant appeal Cecil Colston uh, a hearing. Is there any discussion? Madam, Madam Chair, I didn't hear the, uh, the motion. Can you, someone please repeat the motion? Ms. White, can you repeat the motion, please? Yes, Madam Chairperson, the motion was that the Honorable Ward uh, hold a hearing on the matter of applicant appeal, Mr. Cecil Costin. Is there any discussion? Um, Madam Chair Carter. Yes. Um, uh, to Attorney Wyrick, did I understand you to say that the uh, Mr. Meaner, that uh, Mr. Costa is charged uh, with happened in 2005? You're, you're muted. But those are questions, probably. this is just to give him a hearing. Okay. This All is right. not to determine anything. This is just to give them him a hearing to pre present anything that he wants to present. So this right, is right, right. So can I get a an answer from Attorney Warwick? Yes, it was 2006, Commissioner Holt. Thank you. Any other discussion? A roll call vote, Miss White, please. Yes, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chairperson Holt. Yes. Commissioner Bell? Yay. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Burton? Yes. Commissioner Burton? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Griffey? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Holly? Commissioner Holly? His, his mic is muted. Hold on. Commissioner Howard. Yes. Madam Chairperson, the motion passed. Thank you. And Ms. Uh, Ms. White, can you please get that on the calendar for us, yes. please? Thank you. Yes. Um, and Mr. Wyrick, the second uh, issue? The second issue relates to a towing matter is essentially a situation wherein uh, there's alleged misconduct not only by a tower uh, but a member of BPD that has actually been suspended as a result of that misconduct. Very specifically, the Detroit Police Department manual requires that tows be, and, and these are actually standards that were set uh, by the board as well in its oversight capacity, but the uh, specific policy in question is in DPD manual 204.4-3.1, which actually requires that any tow that a officer performs be made through a call to dispatch. Here we have allegations that a particular officer in question uh, was not making the, these particular toes. This recommendation actually came from Captain Parrish. Uh, very specifically, uh, based upon that one suspicious toe, it led to a more comprehensive investigation where it was found that basically contrary to the standards set by the BOPC and solidified in the Detroit Police Department policy, this officer in question was essentially favoring a one particular tow company. The hearing that's being requested by Captain Pierce is not uh, related to that officer per se, however, is basically related to whether or not this particular towing company that also engaged in the misconduct should be afforded the opportunity to continue in the tow program or whether they're uh, licensed or permit to be uh, within the touring program should be terminated at this point by the signable body. Thank you. So we need to set a date for that. Yes. All right. Ms. White. Chair, I move that we set up a hearing for this particular towing company, give them opportunity, uh, go through the due process. Second. Been moved and supported that we uh, a hearing for VNF Collision Inc. That's the name of the company. Okay. Is there any discussion? Those in favor? A roll call vote. I'm sorry. Madam Vice Chair Preston Holt? Yes. Commissioner Bell? Yay. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Birch? Yes. Commissioner Burton? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Griffey? Commissioner? Yes. 
Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Holly? Yes. Madam Chairperson, the motion passed. Thank you. Um, and Ms. White, uh, please schedule this hearing as soon as possible as well. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, announcements, our next meeting will be Thursday, June 4th, 2020 at 3 p.m. It will be a virtu virtual board meeting. Um, and our next community uh, meeting will be June Thursday, June 11th at 3 p.m. And that will also be a um, virtual meeting. At this time, we will have- Madam Chair, Madam Chair, you didn't call new business. You call unfinished business, but you never said new business. Both of the items we just covered were under new business. I have two, two items under new business. Go ahead, Commissioner Bird. All right, uh, so I move that all city vehicles uh, remove, um, I move that all city vehicles remain in the parking, um, in the parking um, structure unless they are being used for BOPC business, um, and that there be no take home uh, vehicles for B for BOPC. Hearing none, the motion. Did you fails. hear me? Yes, we heard you. Motion fails. What else do you have? Okay, I have another, I have a, uh, one final motion, Madam Chair. Yes. I move that um, we, the board, uh, ban facial recognition for um, until January 1, due to the fact that every black and brown citizen here in the city of Detroit Look alike with a baseball cap and a surgical mask. Support. Negro. What? Madam Chair. Commissioner, uh, it's been moved and supported that, I'm sorry, Ms. White, can you read it back? That we ban facial recognition until January of? Until January 1st. 2021? He did not say. Oh, okay. Yes, he did. Okay. Until January 1st, due to, he indicated uh, specifically black and brown citizens uh, look alike with baseball caps and surgical masks. Okay. Right. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair, I'd just like to have some clarity on what he means. Okay, I get it about, I mean, what I understand the way facial recognition is being used is, is what I've always said all along, is that they, they're using it as a virtual lineup. So that's just looking through uh, the, the books to see you. To, to see you. Take know, care. You didn't leave any extra mess up. <laughs> to to, to uh, uh, you know, to identify people that are already in, in, in the DPD roles that have had past records that can be identified through facial recognition, where they don't have to have a person sitting there, like in the old day, flipping through books and looking through pictures. The computer can do it much faster and more accurate. Is he, are, are you talking about not using that feature of it, or are you talking about just, I, I don't understand what he's talking about, because the way I think you the, that the using facial recognition is that's the only way that I think is being used right now, period. I don't think they're using it where they're scanning people on the street and say, hey, there's Commissioner Brown on Grand River and Greenfield. I mean, so, I mean, what what is your what is your clarity, your goal of, of what you're saying? You don't want them to use facial recognition at all, totally? Or are you, are you in agreement that they can still use it for the virtual lineup piece? That's where I'm um, confused at. To shut down all components of facial recognition, and um, until um, until January into January January one until we can have more um, um, conversations um, with uh, lawmakers and also um, from professors from universities to be able to weigh properly in on this. Right now, we as uh, America's 
poorest city in America. We cannot afford to misidentify a single person who doesn't have the resources for a good legal defense. It criminalizes those that wake up every day in a black and brown community that lives in poverty. Any other discussion? Through the uh, Chair Carter. Through Chair, oh. Chair Carter. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know, about three weeks ago, we received a very um, thorough description of how. And it's being used. Facial recognition would not be used, be used on an individual whose face is partially covered. Um, it might benefit us all to revisit those descriptors in terms of how we understand that facial recognition is not today serving a purpose as it relates to identifying someone behind a mask. Any other discussion? Remind, remind Madam Chair, probably. Uh, I would suggest in the future, Madam Chair, that you move of the chair ruling, the frivolous motion like this be coming forth every week. This is the second, third time. It's out of order. And this board can support you ruling that out of order because we exhaust in time on motion this kind that this board is definitely not supportive of. So uh, this commission is continue was, down that path. It's frivolous. And then we get a frivolous order, second to that effect. There was a second on the motion. Ms. White, can you give us a roll call vote, please? Yes, Madam Vice Chairperson Holt. Madam Vice Chair. You're Holt. muted. I'll come back. Commissioner Bell? Nay. Commissioner Brooks? Nay. Commissioner Brown? Nay. Commissioner Birch? No, ma'am. Commissioner Burton? Commissioner Burton? Commissioner uh, Davis? Um, for my motion. Hello? No. Commissioner, Commissioner Burton? Go on, please. Commissioner Davis? Aye. Commissioner Griffey? Commissioner Griffey? Commissioner Hernandez? Nay. Commissioner Holly? Nay. Madam Vice Chair Holt? No. Madam Chairperson, the motion failed. Thank you. Um, we are moving on to oral communications. Um, please li limit your, uh, give your name and limit your comments to two minutes, please. Uh, Mr. Brown. Madam Chair and the other members of the board, I have 10 names. Wow. I'll start off in twos. Your first speaker would be Mr. Egg Blunt, followed by Mr. Mark Young, president of LSA. Go ahead, Mr. Good Blunt. afternoon, board. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. For the record, my name is Eric Blunt. I'm a minister at Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Detroit, where our priest and pastor is Father Norman Paul Thomas. So here we are again, facing the realities of another unarmed black man being lynched by the police or their associates. This time his name is George Floyd of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And let us be clear how easily this can happen in Detroit. Chief Craig, some four years ago, yes, 2016, he commissioned a study of racism within the Detroit Police Department. And this study, found widespread and growing racism. This study was shelved because it, people did not like the results. And since then, every time a racist situation is discovered, the reaction is that it's an isolated incident and we will get to the bottom of it. The citizens of Detroit cannot afford you to play this game again, not one more day. The release of officers' body-worn camera footage is a delay game that this department plays all too well. I am pleading with all Detroiters to cell phone record any police interaction with people of color. We are demanding that this week a presentation be presented with detailed and measurable plans 
on how lynching of black and brown women at the hands of Detroit Police Department will be prevented in this city. This must be presented at a press conference along with the mayor, his newly appointed deputy mayor, all assistant and deputy chiefs, the general counsel. I will clear my calendar to help you with this in any way that I can. Father Thomas has suggested that we test the entire department for uncontrollable racism, just like we test everyone for coronavirus. Madam Chair, the speaker time is up. Who's Mr. Up? Young Young, Lieutenant Young. We can't hear you. Is the volume on your computer? <laughs> can't hear you. We can't hear you still. So we probably will come back to you? Yes, I can come back. Okay, thank you. Okay. Your next speaker will be uh, Mr. Scotty Bowman, followed by Ms. Ashley Smith. Hold on, I gotta unmute myself. I'm mute. Am I unmuted? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yes. Um, okay, first of all, I will be pleased to attend the news conference Eric Blunt recommends when it, and if it happens. And I understand Minneapolis fired some violent officers. The DPD promotes people for that kind of behavior. Of course, I'm referring to Corporal Dwayne Jones and not those named today. In fact, I was glad to hear his name was not on the list that we heard, but I fear I will hear it someday in the future. If or when that day arrives, I hope you spare us the embarrassment and have that name dropped from the list before approving others and, and who likely deserve those promotions. I call on you to fire Jones and ask the Wayne County prosecutor to revive the felony misconduct charges against him. I am disappointed to hear that violations of civil rights under color of law have continued, though I appreciate the restraint A.C. White mentioned. I urge the chief to instruct all officers to respect the rights of people to peaceably assemble as protected by the U.S. Bill of Rights and the Michigan Declaration of Rights. I invite all victims of DPD-sanctioned civil rights violations to use the contact form at draco.life so we can discuss this and how to proceed. The failure of the chair to acknowledge Commissioner Burton and his motions at multiple meetings and the frequent exclusion of brutality victim sister Ashley Smith from comments is unacceptable. Commissioner Bell's evasion of facts and effort to squelch a frank discussion of facial recognition misuse is repugnant to open debate and his assertion that motions he disagrees with are frivolous displaces blatant disregard to facts the community or open discourse. I yield. Madam Chair, can we go back to Lieutenant Mark Young, President of yes. LSA? Yes. Can you hear me now, ma'am? Yes, we can. First, initially, I wanted to talk about another issue, and, and that, issue, that issue was addressed, and I thank the board for addressing that issue properly and correct. The statement that I want to make is I've never been prouder Never in my 33 going on 34 years prouder of being a member of the Detroit Police Department. These men and women have stepped up during the pandemic. They knew that 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 facing uh, doing their job that they could be killed, injured, disabled, or or wounded during their job. They never imagined being able to take something back uh, based on this pandemic. I have never been prouder of these men and women that's, that's not only fought crime, that fought a virus that's being recognized nationally. I also want to be thankful to the businesses and the people of this great community that stepped up, not only for the first responders, but for um, all the other people. I've never been prouder to be on the Detroit Police Department. I've never been prouder to be a, a lifelong citizen of Detroit, and I'm grateful. And we need to be appreciative to these men and women that are going out here, not only fighting crime, but fighting something else. And they do it because they love this great city. I thank you and I, um, I appreciate you, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, Lieutenant Young. Thank you for your candor. 
Um, we appreciate you, and we are all proud of the when men, men and women of the department. We are. Thank you. Um, Ms. Ashton Smith. Okay, so first of all, um, it's iron ironic that you guys give kudos to the mental, um, to the police department for firing the police officers involved with the murder of our brother George Floyd. Um, especially when you guys are responsible for rewarding police brutality in the city of Detroit. If we are going to bring up institutionalized racism, then we have to bring up the fact. If Sheldy Smith was white, Jones, black self would have been underneath the prison and fired that day. Um, this is beyond disrespectful to hear, and it's disrespectful to my sister and my family. Yeah. I personally thought it. How dare you sit here and congratulate anyone for doing something that you refuse to do, which is provide justice. Um, they did not promote or promote any of these bad apples. They fired him without hesitation. Um, no conviction was needed. No appeal was necessary. Also, last week, um, Commissioner Bell was very, 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 very specific in that we should address um, Jones as sergeant. Um, and that's and I don't think any of us really respect that he even got promoted. We're we're still trying to question why he even has a job. I mean, we could call him a slew of things, but it will not be sergeant. We could call him criminal. We could call him a woman beater. We call him multiple things. But until we see paperwork, at minimum, we will not be calling him sergeant. The only thing you guys should be calling him is fired. He should not have a job. Justice for Shelby. Fire him. Fire him now. And um, I yield my time. Madam Chair, your next speaker would be Mr. Barry Foster, president of Detroit's Touring Association, followed by Ms. Julie Simma. Thank you, Mr. Burrow. Mr. Foster? Yes. Hi, right, good, after, uh, good afternoon, board, uh, chairwoman, uh, DPD. Uh, my name is Barry Foster. I'm the president of the Detroit Towing Association and also the owner of LIJBS Towing. Um, through the chair, uh, ma'am, if I may, uh, there was a couple of things that um, I wasn't able to chime in at first um, because when I got the permission for the host, my button was sticking. But I wanted to address a couple of things before reading the mission statement of the uh, Detroit Towing Association. Um, Reverend Holly mentioned um, with the community, what do we, what does the tow companies do with involved in the community? Um, the way we're set up strategically in our precincts, each uh, tow company I can speak for works with their precinct or district um, in a simultaneous way of uh, donating services, donating to the community. And for instance, as I can give you a couple of things that our company, LIJBS, has done in the past. Um, I don't know if you guys will recall. Um, a couple of years ago, there was a story on Fox 2 where um, Hill Perkins had um, asked for a donations for a senior on the east side of Detroit that needed a roof on her home. Our company donated actually the um, paid for the roof to be on the lady's home and also um, had put new gutters on the lady's home. Her name was Miss Billingsy. Um, also for there was a, a child that got hurt on the west side um, that we had provided a vehicle for the uh, family to drive when they were involved in a shooting, um, also along with other donations that we have donated uh, backpacks to school um, through our precinct. Uh, we donate turkeys every year, over 100 turkeys to the 11th precinct for the senior bingo. Just to share a little light of there is involvement with all the tow companies where we're, we don't want recognition. And to, when I say that, Hugh Perkins and also Sergeant Marcellus Ball had begged myself and my brothers to go on TV when we donated the roof uh, for Miss Billick's scene a couple years ago. So we're like unsung heroes. We don't like recognition, but we do work in the community. We don't like a pat on the back. And just to share another light on something, in the wintertime in our community and where we're based at with our Detroit-based business, when there's a winter storm, we call up our, we have our loader operators go out in the community and clean the streets before the actual city has trucks come down to plow the streets. Um, with that being said, I would like to just read the Detroit Towing Association mission statement. Madam Chair, with um, your permission, the speaker time is up. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Quickly. 
the mission statement is to provide education on local changes in laws, rules, and exchange ideas to promote interest and welfare of all towing and recovery operators in the Metro Detroit area while encouraging towing professionalism and quality customer service to encourage fair, healthy competition in all business dealings and promote good fellowship among members. Why the Detroit Towing Association was created. The Detroit Towing Association was created to bring together Detroit police authorized tour, private tours and suppliers associated with the industry. Forming an association allows us to have strength in numbers while dealing with the city of Detroit and the Detroit Police Department to ensure interests are being considered, our, our interests are being considered as well. The association will provide an opportunity to meet with fellow tours and share ideas and knowledge that can improve the daily operations of our business. Also being engaged in our communities. Benefits for association members are protect members' interests as a collective, advise members on issues at city and county levels. The Detroit Towing Association will employ a consultant to advocate on the association's behalf. Remember, united we stand and divided we fall. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Thank you. Mr. Brown? Yes, Madam Chair, your next speaker is Ms. Julie Simmons. Ms. Simmons? Good afternoon, board. Good afternoon. Thank you, my name is Julie Sema. I'm the vice president of the Detroit Towing Association. I'm proudly working with the city of Detroit for the last 31 years. I just wanna say thank you for what everyone has done. Um, this COVID thing has been um, an economic outbreak for everyone, for all the men, women in blue, as well as the department and everyone that has had um, partaking in everything that we have, what we're actually going through right now. This is a, a horrific thing that we're all experiencing. And I just want to say thank you for the police department, the heroes, the medical field, and again, the commissioners and all the rules that you guys are putting in place to take place and keeping everyone safe. Um, in doing so, myself and all the other total companies are collectively um, coming together and helping one another out in any way we possibly can through this whole epidemic time, whether it's um, giving back to the citizens of the city of Detroit right now that Unfortunately, some people just don't have the funds and we're helping out older cedar citizens, some people that just don't have it right now. Uh, we know that the Secretary of State's have been closed down right now and the paperwork aren't in order. We've um, acknowledged different things that we've had to go through to protect ourselves and the citizens giving back their vehicles. With that being said, um, myself as well as other Detroit police towers have been collectively coming together as a whole and providing citizens in the city of Detroit services for a very long time. The city of Detroit has been a unique history channel of itself. It's, it's collectively as a diversity of men and women, different ethnicities. And this is who we all are, including every board member that's on this board right now. This is who we are. We are different men and women of different ethnicities. We are women owned, black and white owned, different ethnicity owned and have been for the past 30, 40, 50 years of some of these different tow companies. We acknowledge what the police department has done and we just ask that this board take time to listen to what we have to say and having interactions, what you guys want to do. We want to work with the police department. We collectively wanted to and have been doing so and probably doing so for many, many years. Madam Chair, speak the time is up. That this body continue having the fair and equitable distribution of tows because this has financially impacted all the towers, at least 40% of the tows that Thank has been. Your time is up, ma'am. Thank you so much Thank for your you time. So God bless everyone. Thank you for all your hard work and we love you guys. Thank you. Madam Chair, your next two speakers uh, dropped off. So I got Mr. Burt Johnson, if he still wants to speak during oral communication and Ms. Kathy Montgomery will be your last speaker. All right. Mr. Johnson, are you still on? Yes, I am. Okay, um, go ahead, sir. Yes, I am. Uh, I, I just, um, I actually didn't think I was going to speak again. I just want to thank you all. And um, I've been talking to the towers just throughout the pendency of this, uh, this hearing here. Um, I'll reiterate that we will get some information back to you forthwith so we can answer your questions. Um, and I think Julie, our last speaker, uh, uh, one of our tow owners, uh, hit on something very important. We want to be understood by you. Uh, we want to measure up to what you hope is a standard of towing uh, that will be uh, initiated and utilized across the city of Detroit. And so 
the information we will get back to you and we want to keep this line of communication open. Um, it's not just limited to that. Uh, you can feel free to ask us for anything. And uh, we're also going to uh, do some internal uh, discussion to make sure we understand everything going on with all the towers that we have in our membership. And uh, we certainly appreciate your time and your considerations, your many professional courtesies today. Thank you, sir. Ms. Kathy Montgomery and Madam Chair, she'll be your last speaker. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, commissioners. Um, I am uh, calling in again to uh, register my uh, disgust with the promotion of Corporal Dwayne Jones to sergeant. And I believe at the end of the last meeting, um, it was quoted that um, when there's a discrepancy between the, the Detroit Police Department and the Board of Police Commissioners, that you need to seek outside counsel. Uh, and I'm wondering uh, if that has been done. Um, uh, I don't know why Attorney Warwick cannot handle that, but I definitely believe you need to appeal this decision to promote uh, Dwayne Jones. He uh, abused his authority by punching a uh, mentally ill woman, a citizen of the, uh, the city of Detroit. Um, you, your commission represents us, the people, the citizens of Detroit. And when the police overstep their authority, um, we rely on you to defend us. And uh, I'd like to know what has been done what is going to be done to demote him, he should not be in a, posi a supervisory position over other police officers when he cannot uh, properly handle his behavior in his treatment of citizens. Do we need to have a killing of a Detroiter before he is uh, uh, removed from the police department or properly disciplined? Uh, he's on probation and he's He's promoted while well, he's on probation, probation for, for an assault crime on a citizen while on duty. That, that's totally unacceptable. Mr. Um, Warren, on the line? Yes. Okay. Do you want to respond, please? He muted himself, um, Chair Carter. Uh, good afternoon. We're still awaiting a, uh, a written legal opinion from Corporation Council on that specific section of the charter as it relates to the uh, conflict that I referenced last week, Charter Section 7.5. In addition, I did speak to one out, potential outside counsel firm that is enthusiastic. I'm not going to mention our firm's name because we haven't, uh, you know, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's that would be necessary to do so. What was Corporation Council's um, determination? He, he, the last that I spoke with him on the issue is that he was supposed to give me a legal memorandum, which would then empower the board to go seek outside legal counsel. So that's what we're waiting on. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, if there's no other business before this board, this bo uh, I'll entertain a motion to... Um, Madam Chair? Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Commissioner Birch. Before yes, ma'am. Thank you. Before you close, I would just like for everybody in District Three to give themselves a distance hug for being the leader in the census count. We will not give up. We will continue. But that took our grocery store businesses, our other businesses, our churches, our schools, our black club members, all working together. <clears throat> to be the leader in the census count. Keep up the good work and God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ch Chair Carter, I, I believe Commissioner Burton tried to um, come in. If not, I'd like to also um, give kudos for John being a leader in the uh, 2020 census and we will continue to get organized uh, and uh, increase the, the uh, positive um, 
responses. I'd also like to say, uh, Madam Chair, that um, having Lieutenant Young come on and express his enthusiasm for the promotion of the um, very officers uh, is, is quite encouraging because I have come to know him as a non, no nonsense leader who has very high expectations of his uh, fellow police uh, members. I would move for adjournment. I, I, I second it. Then move and support it that we adjourn. Is there any discussion? Favor? Good evening. Good evening. Favor? Signify? Be good. Be good. Bye. Yeah. All right. Oh, motion, Aye. please. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Again, welcome Commissioner Jesus Hernandez. And we look forward to working with you um, in the coming weeks. Have a good evening, everyone. We'll see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.